Okay, great introduction, Leslie. Um, okay, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, um, and I believe it's going to be really, hopefully it'll be really interesting. You may learn a few new things. Uh, I'm not sure how much of you guys know about Kaiser Permanente and how we do uh, innovation and technology. But my goal here is to really kind of lay it out. We had a really awesome uh, opening keynote from uh, Dr. Rue. Um, he stole pretty much half of my slides. So, um, but anyway, um, the <clears throat> I we normally don't let our hymns presidents out very much, you know, particularly up to the podium. So this is round two for me today. I, did, I got to do the president's opening address. But anyway, we, we made a special exception. So thank you guys. Um, so I will be doing the keynote. I did actually invite our, at the time, the VP of, of Innovation uh, at our uh, Kaiser up in Oakland. So she accepted. And then uh, only a, a week or two later, she said, oh, Jim, I'm kind of moving on. Is that going to be a problem? And so uh, anyway, so uh, I talked to our physician chief information transformation officer down here. And I'll explain all that as we go through the, the slides today. <clears throat> um, he had another bunch of meetings he needed to go to. So anyway, so I got elected. And so um, I was, a great thing about Kaiser, and really I think it's indicative of the healthcare community, is, is really this is a team effort. It's all about, I mean, there's what, 300 million people in this country. Uh, there's no way that one particular organization can possibly address the access of all those folks, you know, came to our healthcare organization. So really, it's, I mean, we do compete uh, in a good way, but we also really were all about you and I and our members and, our, and the patients in this country and really ultimately the world <clears throat> bringing people to total health. So anyway, her slide deck was about 14 slides. I kind of met with a few extra people and said, let me uncover all the cool stuff that Kaiser's doing. Let me figure out all the things that, um, that are going on. So I have 46 slides. So, uh, plus a video. Um, so I'm probably not gonna be, I may not get through all of it, but what I'm gonna do is kind of give you, maybe just we'll breeze through it. Um, the first couple of slides will probably be good if you just woke up from a cryogenic sleep uh, and you didn't really know what was going on. <laughs> this is a ref uh, healthcare reform is going on. So I'll just kind of, uh, Dr. Rue did cover a number of different things. Uh, and, I, and so I think what I'll do is I'll kind of lay over his foundation uh, typically, when you're coming to a conference or you're going to a class, um, you you forget 80% of what you heard. Does everybody know what that rule is? You know, within the next 24 hours. So if you hear a little bit of a repetition, that's a good thing. All right. So anyway, so I'll try to I'll run through that, and then I, I'd like to just talk about how we're organized at Kaiser with uh, with innovation. And can everybody hear me? Okay. All right. And then I would also I'm going to try to multitask too and talk at the same time here. I'm also going to run through. Uh, all of the 2,300 um, products and in, innovation products that our, our innovation team has looked at. Um, so we have a, we actually have a database of about 1,800 uh, solutions, um, about 2,000 vendors. So it's a, it's a massive effort. No, we can't really get through all that. So what I'm going to do is kind of pick out some of the highlights of that. So I'll run through at the end, I'll run through a number of, um, of different uh, uh, technologies, innovations, et cetera, um, that we are actually piloting. Uh, we've got at least running at least one medical center. Uh, we're looking to spread, or we may have uh, gotten that through the entire enterprise. So, sound like a good uh, agenda for a post-lunch discussion? Okay. And if we need to uh, stand up and do some Zumba, you guys let me know, okay? Okay. All right, so here's if you just woke up. So obviously healthcare, <clears throat> there's a lot of challenges today, so these, these shouldn't be uh, surprising to you guys. Access, I, I, I do want to um, highlight that that is a key area that we're, we're really trying to address at Kaiser, and I know that uh, many other healthcare organizations are also very concerned about it because what, are, what the consumer is looking for is they're looking for convenience. They're looking for uh, if they call up the, appoint, the call center, um, and there's something wrong, are they looking for an appointment or are they wanting their problem fixed? What do you guys think? All right, so they really want it addressed. Um, why, do we make, why do we drag them into our facilities and our buildings on non-acute when really, why don't we come to them? So there's a lot of things when it comes to innovation that we need to start th not only thinking more process improvement, but let's, let's flip it. And so as Dr. Rue had said earlier, he, got the, he has the triangle flipped around. So there's a lot of things that we can do 
to really change things. And the great thing is the ideas will come from not just the, the executives, not, uh, and we have some, uh, Kaiser does have a venture capitalist uh, component, which I'll talk about. We had a really great panel about um, focused innovation, uh, trying to get productize a lot of solutions, and I'm sorry about the feedback here, um, and, and then spinning those off. Uh, but uh, we really need to, um, can we get those uh, out in, and can we listen to the people that might actually have some really great innovation ideas, the frontline staff, the nurses and the doctors. So we're finding it, it uh, particularly at Kaiser that we, we like to uh, really c uh, connect with our staff, with our members, get a lot of feedback. And so that's where we're gonna, as we all work together towards this, we're gonna uh, see some great outcomes. Maybe I'll stand back here. Okay, so our world is changing. We talked uh, briefly about this. So from a, uh, from a Kaiser perspective, we see three big things happening. Uh, the empowerment of individuals, uh, a very interesting dynamic with uh, uh, unusual competitors uh, and new entrants into the marketplace. So I don't think 10 years ago you would have thought of some of the, um, uh, some of the people that are uh, some of the entities that are involved in healthcare now. Uh, that we're seeing, and then uh, that disruption is really fuel is fueled by technology innovation. So, uh, definitely the focus um, uh, with uh, being uh, disruptive in a good way is going to be on technology. So these are three things that we're seeing that's driving uh, business enablement. So here's a, a slide that I kind of put together that uh, shows also something that Dr. Wu talked about. Uh, we're shifting to a new model of care, and so that's where the patient's at the center. And so we need to kind of change our processes. So what I'm going to do is flip over here because the slides are slightly out of order. Um, so here's a slide that just talks about, hey, we've got a new model of care. We need to innovate. How can we do that? So um, th these are uh, on the left side where kind of the old ways that we did things. Uh, very episodic, focused on the clinician, uh, restricted, uh, depends on the knowledge of the clinician. And so now we're looking at much more uh, focus on the patient, uh, that relationship. We want to get engaged with our patients and our members. We don't want to be that 10, we don't want healthcare to be that 10% where the clinician is engaged uh, with the patient or the member. We want to get, how can we get into that? Uh, 20%, 30%, 40%, and so we can have more of an integrated connection, make it more social. And so as a result, we're seeing as, as uh, Andy Grove um, uh, coined this shift left here. So we're really seeing, um, we're going from buildings, um, moving forward and actually moving left uh, to where ultimately the patient or member is going to take charge of their, of their healthcare. And that's where you're gonna get uh, mo the most adoption and the best outcome. Somebody had asked me earlier, you know, hey, when are we gonna, when are we gonna see digital wearables really take off? Because after six months, you know, one third of the users kind of, including myself, I bought a Fitbit at Costco and only lasted about two months with me. Why? Because I actually had a mobile app that did the same thing. <clears throat> um, and then I think there's another stat that after a year, uh, um, there's, it's even a greater percentage that don't uh, engage you know, with these fitness trackers. But we're really seeing that as we can engage the individual with their provider um, and they come up with a, a shared plan with goals, uh, we can integrate the information into the uh, electronic health record, we're, we're, we're gonna see some great outcomes. Okay, so back to, okay, so here we go. So that's the individual. So the intense competition is kind of fascinating because we've got a, 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 a cast light health, which can actually drill down and tell you exactly the details of your procedure, how much it costs, really break it down in many health systems, and I'm just talking in general here. You know, we, we don't really give our patients and members the details, and so that's kind of a little bit frustrating. So consumers want information, they want to be in charge, they want to be able to make the choice. Spotify has disrupted the music industry, giving, uh, you know, uh, allowing personalization on demand, um, Airbnb is, um, is ho has disrupted the hotel. I don't know much about it. I just kind of read up on this. Uh, the hotel and the uh, travel booking, at least the vacations. So really, it's like the consumers get, are, are getting tools, and it's being done through the mobile platform. And then Uber, because everybody knows, uh, well, most people, unless you're, you've been cryogenically sleeping for a while, uh, where, where you, can, uh, get a, you can get a, a, a ride via a taxi, you know, whenever, however, really in, uh, inexpensive. And so we're looking down here. So at the bottom row there, we're seeing some things that we probably hadn't thought would happen. Uh, so there's, there's uh, one medical where you can go ahead and get same-day appointments to, uh, in a low acuity to see a physician. Teladoc, uh, you know, 
uh, as of a couple, like maybe last year, I think they had 11, 11 million members, which is more than the 9.6 million members that Kaiser has. And you can just right there pay $40, see a doctor right then. So these are, um, you know, these are these are uh, entities that are rising up new ways um, to do business because that's what the need is. Um, and then we're seeing in the retail uh, market, Walgreens, uh, um, Walmart, CVS. And then I also read an article, I think it's kind of an old article, but Verizon noted um, that uh, there's uh, two, the statistics show that there's uh, far too many um, uh, non-acute cases going to the emergency department. So hey, if, what about if we work with our customers, offer them a way, you know, offer them uh, a bandwidth, uh, get them so that we can some kind of way validate the co-pays, et cetera, and then we can uh, uh, expedite care for uh, non-urgent care type of things and really ultimately drive down the costs of healthcare. So, so this is what's going on. And so if you're a healthcare organization, you can't sit around and do things the way you used to do. You can't take two years to order a server. You can't take you know, three years to, uh, to add some functionality to your EHR. Uh, we have to do things really differently. So this next slide here talks about uh, really, uh, this is the pl these are the four key platforms, which is also called SMAC, for those of you guys that have heard that. I didn't actually hear that until I was coached recently uh, that that's what these are, but it's uh, social, mobile, analytics, big data, and cloud. So these are the platforms that we're going to be innovating on. So if you're here, you're looking to, uh, to partner with uh, some of the venture firms here. Uh, these are the things that you can uh, really develop quickly uh, to meet the needs and the expectations of the consumers. All right. Uh, so how is that going to happen? Uh, so we've got at the bottom, we've got our foundational enablers. Uh, and then we have our what's called our systems of record. Uh, I think IBM um, and another person named Andy kind of came up with the term systems of engagement. So we've got our systems of record. Uh, they are large. They contain lots of data. They don't necessarily talk to each other. We're not really expecting them to talk to each other uh, a huge amount. But how can we develop products and services? How can we uh, roll out capabilities in a matter of weeks, one to two weeks, rather than waiting months, six months, nine months, a year. So, so that's where the systems of engagement uh, comes in. And so we're beginning to look at that um, at Kaiser Permanente. And so we're, lo we're looking at those four different building blocks there to do that uh, through the use of APIs and, and technology partnerships. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's rapid application development uh, to meet the demand that's there because uh, uh, in the integrated delivery network space that we're, we're seeing our country evolve to, to address the, uh, you know, the high cost of care, uh, we're really seeing that members are where it's at. So if you've got the members, uh, you're going to begin to be, you're, you're, you'll have the influence. So you have to, but because our members are now making choices, um, there's more and more organizations that are allowing their uh, members to go or their, uh, their employees to go to private exchanges, et cetera, or uh, giving them some fund to go ahead and, and to do self-care. Uh, they're making choices and they're choosing. So we can't be sitting in our laurel saying, hey, it's a B2B world. Uh, we'll just deal with the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the employer groups and the commercial uh, government groups. We need to be impressing and wowing and meeting the needs of you and I, our patients' members. Okay, so here's a, a um, as I, we're about to get into some of the um, KP um, information here, but this is a little journey map of uh, Kaiser um, as, we, as we're driving uh, with technology innovation. So we had our systems of record probably 2004, 2008 that we spent some time on. I wasn't with the organization then, but I heard it was an awesome time. Uh, to, uh, up to 2013, we really focused on, hey, let's get the, Let's get the network rolling and the infrastructure, uh, because if you can't connect two points or uh, you know, one interesting thing as a quick side note, we've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of work with trying to get video conferencing and virtual visits uh, with our members uh, with uh, with the physician, and we're noticing that um, it's really difficult to get things to work. Um, with PCs and Macs, now, nothing against those, but but it's really easy with mobile devices. So we're finding uh, that our that our strategy of uh, responsive web design and mobile first really is that's kind of where we need to be focused on, because uh, folks are really trading out. If you don't lose it or drop it, you're getting another smartphone, or you don't have to get the latest cool thing. The prices are low enough, but people keep their PCs. My goodness, XP, Windows 98, nothing against you know those particular operating systems, but and those are really tough to integrate with. 
So uh, when it comes to actually connecting with a video signal, uh, for those of you guys that have really tried that, um, we're finding actually just, hey, just go straight to mobile tablets. So soon we'll be at uh, holograms and virtual reality, you know, just projecting that doctor on the wall with a nice, you know, office in the background. I mean, hopefully that's not going to be uh, too far in the too, uh, in the too distant future, but, uh, you know, we're starting at the, we're starting, uh, we're crawling before we can walk and then we're going to walk before we can run. So we've got to start somewhere. Um, so we've gone over these here. Okay, so a little bit about uh, Kaiser Permanente, if you've never heard of the organization. Uh, so um, here's some, I'm not going to read it, just some uh, reasonably uh, up-to-date facts about the organization. We are in eight states. Um, we have a budget, uh, IT budget of $5 billion. That's not on the, uh, um, it might be a little bit more this year um, on the slide. And we've got $30 million allocated to innovation. Uh, so there's really, uh, to have 10% 10, have 10 of your budget on IT means that uh, technology is a driving factor. And I'm sure as with many of our uh, strategic plans, I know at ours, uh, perform, lead, and grow, uh, those are kind of the three buzzwords that kind of encapsulate the strategic plan. Uh, you know, technology is all wrapped in, in it. And so innovation technology, is, uh, and I'm quite sure that it's the same for each of your healthcare organizations. We cannot do this without technology and without innovation. So it's really exciting. Um, but uh, in the, also, I believe we have about 10 petabytes of data. Not that anybody really totally cares about that. Um, so here's some stats. Uh, we do have a, um, a patient uh, portal that's it's, uh, gotten quite a bit of activity. We've got about almost half of our members um, using it, so that's really good. We've got tons of emails to doctors. You know, we can order prescriptions. You can see your lab results. Um, you can schedule an appointment, but you know we want to go to the next level, so we're bringing it to mobile, and I'll talk a little bit about what, um, how we're set up at, uh, at Kaiser for mobile. If you're a developer and you want to go ahead and uh, engage with Kaiser, um, I can I'll share with you a, a website that you can go to. I'll talk about how we're, you know, what platforms we support, um, our APIs, etc. Okay, so um, so four things I'd like to just cover real quick, and then we're going to go into some of the stuff we're doing. Uh, so, um, it's, as we talked about earlier today, I think you guys can agree that it's no longer about episodic, just healthcare, right? It's about total health. So we've coined a phrase called Thrive. You, you guys may have seen it in advertising here and there, but it's really, we got a lot of focus groups. We've got some input from members, uh, outside folks. Uh, so we kind of rebranded a little bit, so we've got that, but really it's, this is a trend that's worldwide. Our, our CEO just got back from a healthcare economic summit in Switzerland or something, and they were really talking about total health. So I think that's, that is the direction that we're going. So if you want to get on the train, I suggest you jump on in there and, you know, say, and begin to look at your organization, uh, look at your capabilities, and, you know, see how can we position ourselves to be a, a really awesome contributing factor to this. So, so total health is really what we can probably term, at least we feel like that at Kaiser Permanente, is the new megatrend. Okay. Um, secondly, is in order to do that, uh, it's in, uh, we talked about it this morning, I think I've alluded to it. Uh, for us at Kaiser Permanente, it's all about care anyway. So instead of at the, Instead of only at the hospital or only at, only at the clinic, it's at the school, it's in your car. We actually are working on what's called the connected vehicle. Uh, soon we'll have semi-autonomous -aut uh, vehicles that's, that'll be out in about 2018 to 2021, where you can have your information connected to your health record, but I'm getting ahead of myself because that's kind of on the down, uh, further down. So, uh, but lots of, lots of really fascinating things, but it's all about being connected wherever you're at. So if you're at the soccer field, you're at the mall, you know, uh, how can we deliver care uh, right then there um, effectively? Okay, so what I'd like to do is just play this video, it's about five minutes. And it has a, uh, a, a number of different capabilities that we're currently working on. Some of you guys may have seen it, but probably a lot of you guys have not. Um, and then I'm going to talk about two other major initiatives. One is going to be in the outpatient space that we're working on right now. I mean, I've been going to a lot of focus groups. At, uh, um, so we're, we're, we're ideating that um, as well as kind of what we're doing in the retail space. We've made some um, arrangements with uh, Target and a few things. So I'd like to just share that um, and then I'll go over some of the, some of the tools. Okay, mouse. And you can find this on YouTube. Um.
I do have an IT background, so hopefully I can get this working.
All right, pretty cool. Yeah, actually, I had somebody say to me, okay, Jim, but when are you guys going to actually do that? Um, so actually, all of those are up and running in some form or fashion, either um, proof of concept, a pilot, or we're using it. So uh, I'm not aware of any that, that are not. Okay, one second here. Okay, so that's um, that's care anyway, which which we're we call internally imagining care anywhere. So in other words, how can we imagine a different future? And it takes everybody. Uh, if you're on the care side, if you're on the health plan side, if you're um, on administration operations, you're you're, you're uh, you know pushing one of the cars, um, cleaning the uh, the hospital. All right, uh, a third thing that we're doing, uh, we started this in Southern California, but it's pretty much going uh, national at this point to our, our other locations. But we're currently in the process of saying, how can we have a, a better and a different outpatient experience? So if you can't have your care provided uh, ex externally where you're at, uh, then how can we make that visit to the clinic a lot better? So one of the things, of course, I don't know if you guys have that problem, but if you ever have lines where you have to wait in line and check in multiple times, um, you know. So, the, there, there are, so one of the concepts that we have is to really uh, find a way to have a patient or a member come in. Um, you do your check-in on your smartphone. Uh, we have tablets there. We can do it uh, there, kiosk tablets, et cetera. Uh, do your co-pays, everything before you come. Uh, when you come in, uh, we're, at, we're looking to see, is it possible to self-room to a bay, a bay of um, uh, exam rooms? Uh, and what we've got some technology. We're looking at how do we queue that. Um, and um, the care team actually comes to that one, uh, one room, which is called a hybrid exam room. Um, and so if you need to see a specialist, there's a, you know, I can't, at this point there's a monitor there, although hopefully soon we'll have the whole wall going. But, um, and then uh, you can get your uh, blood drawn. Um, if you need to take, we, we, are, we are kind of having some uh, debate about whether or not if you want uh, to have an x-ray, do we want to bring that machine in there? So that's going to be a little complicated. So, uh, so there, there probably would be a visit uh, to another uh, room potentially if you needed that. Um, and then you, so when you leave, um, uh, your, your meds would either be brought to you or you could pick them up. Is they, you know, the, the pharmacy's already filled them. Um, you know, uh, and uh, there's no need actually for you to go sit in another location, wait, check in, pay another copay, et cetera, et cetera. So it's ways to saying, how can we make that a much more pleasing and, um, and a wonderful experience? And so that's what really uh, I think all of us are looking for. So how can we think differently? So we're kind of going through that process at this point, and it does cause a different workflow on the back office piece of it. So we're you know, going, going through all that. So it's kind of fun. Uh, we have eight, um, eight medical office buildings uh, currently being built in uh, Southern California with another um, 10, I think, over the next few years after that. So we're, uh, but we would redesign the building literally differently so that we can handle this uh, new type of a workflow, such as if you have a big, um, you know, a big space for receptionists with many receptionists. If you don't really need, if you're doing check-in in advance, you don't really need that, so you can kind of use that space for something else. So it's kind of interesting. Um, so we, uh, we experimented a little bit with, um, by um, having what's called a KP Care Corner in uh, out in the um, I think it's the Inland Empire uh, with Walmart, so that actually did uh, went really well. Got a lot of good feedback from those that that um, um, uh, we we received KP members as well as non KP members that were shopping at Walmart in those locations. And so since then we've got four um, Target locations that we've opened up, and so this is one of them. Uh, one of them happens to be in my area, my neck of the woods, down in Orange County. Uh, so it's in Fullerton, I think. Um, and so uh, we have about 85 different services that are offered, um, and we're getting really good, uh, you know, really great feedback. Um, so um, I think it's just something where, you know, we have to, we have to meet the, uh, our consumers where they're at and think of new ways to do things. So this all you know, requires, uh, you know, different technologies. We've got to get it to work. In the, in the target clinics, we have uh, one nurse practitioner and one LVN that would be there to staff it. Um, um, and then if you need to see a physician, you'd have to do a teleconsult. Okay, so how do we do all this? It's really by um, fine-tuning the digital health agenda or strategy. So we've kind of talked about that, the social, mobile, um, uh, analytics, and cloud. So, so really, if you look at this here, we've got the e EMRs, kind of uh, that middleware between our traditional way of delivering care. And so now we're going to really try to leverage um, 
you know, the mobile social, et cetera, so that we can truly empower our patients and our members. Now, one thing uh, interesting, interesting to note in the, sh in the uh, retail environment, uh, there is uh, a uh, term called omni-channel. How many of you guys are familiar with multi-channel, omni-channel? So we're, we're seeing that, um, like for instance, we worked a little bit with, uh, in, up in Oakland with Converse, where you can go into the Converse store, go ahead and you know, pick up like a bare bone sneaker, and then you can design it and do all kinds of cool stuff with it, post it, uh, and say you have to go back to work, it's your lunch break, because you don't want to get in trouble, so you should go back to work. <clears throat> but you post it on uh, some social media platform, you get feedback from you know, all your friends, et cetera, and then you go home and you finish the transaction. So it's really a way to track, uh, from a shopping perspective, the, the experience of with multiple um, entities all the way through to the to the point of the end of the transaction. So we're seeing that these multiple channels now um, in healthcare. Why can't we have an omni-channel type of a thing? So if you start um, uh, an interaction uh, with maybe uh, a nurse on call uh, system, and then you have to go back to work, and then you finish with a physician teleconference, you go in. So we're looking at ways. How can we do that? So um, this is a slide that kind of briefly overviews some of the major areas, and when I, I have a number of slides to go over each of these in depth of the, of the products that we've looked at. And I said, you know, it's, it's over 2,000 products, so we'd be here for several days. You guys could get probably a, a PhD or something for, uh, if, if we get enough credits uh, if you stay that long. But uh, it's robotics, uh, remote monitoring, vital signs, uh, uh, mobile, a number of mobile diagnostic things we've looked at. Uh, personal emergency res uh, response. Um, definitely we're, we're uh, looking at uh, medication adherence. So before we dive into um, a number of the technologies that we uh, are looking at, we're looking to, uh, we've either uh, spread or it's, at some, uh, it's up and running at some level at Kaiser, um, I thought I would give you guys a little view of what is, what is the KP universe for innovation. So I, I mentioned earlier that innovation just kind of flows through the the entire organization, it's a 70-year organization that actually has been talking about innovation really for uh, not just in I, on the IT side, for many years with just all of the staff. So we have an innovation and advanced technology group that uh, um, it's, it's our main group charged with identifying innovative opportunities, working with lines of business. Um, they have an innovation fund you know, in the millions. Um, so, uh, but also there's some other interesting uh, bubbles here. So I'm part of the regional innovation group, uh, which I'm, I'm one of the leads on the IT side for Southern California, identifying um, uh, innovation, working to um, cat uh, categorize it and to determine it has, um, are the other medical centers in Kaiser, are they, do they even know about this? Um, and then is it capable of spread? So there's a group that actually, and that's about 164 innovation activities that, we've, that we're currently working on. Um, Every medical center, and so you can see, um, I don't think this has a pointer or not here. Oh yeah, cool, okay. So every medical center has, a, um, has an innovation group. Uh, so that consists of the medical group uh, staff as well as uh, physicians, so they partner together. Uh, from a regional perspective, uh, particularly Southern California, uh, we also have uh, physicians partnered with um, uh, one of the administrators on the medical group side, and that group meets on a regular basis to just talk about what are the needs from a clinical perspective. So lots of, um, lots of time and energy and effort is, uh, is going on at Kaiser Permanente to say, hey, how can we get feedback? What is it, what's it gonna be a value differentiator? Um, we have our Mobility Center of Excellence, or MCOE, um, much like uh, I think what was said earlier for another organization. So that, uh, that's an organization that focuses solely on developing mobile apps. We've got about 30 apps at this point. Um, since I'm on the topic, I'll just bring it up. We, have, uh, we, can, we can develop uh, the, <clears throat> um, the iOS platform, Android, as well as uh, the Windows platform. Uh, we have um, our own um, um, API at this point. It's called, uh, we call it the interchange. So if you go to https interchange.kp.org, uh, just Google that afterwards or Bing it if you're a Microsoft fan. Um, and that's where you can, uh, you can uh, present your uh, situation, help partner with uh, KP to develop, to get, we can extract data from your, um, from your device or from your application. Uh, we also offer a context um, sensitive uh, location based uh, API at this point. So one of the APIs we offer is to folks that want to develop um, and their particular product and have it at, at, at Kaiser. <clears throat> um, you can get tap into all of our 
39 hospitals and 600 something facilities. Uh, you'll know the hours of operation, um, specialties, et cetera. So it's really helpful to have that publicly available data set. Uh, we're also looking, uh, our next round of curated data uh, that will be made available at the interchange will be um, research data. So lots of things that we're doing to try to help the, the community develop and to you know, improve outcomes. Uh, this is kind of an unusual one. We actually have people because, uh, called innovation hunters. Their sole job at Kaiser is to find out who's innovating. And so they go back. They, so it's not only at Kaiser, but outside we talked a lot of vendor products. So, so you can see there's quite a bit of activity here, um, circling here, KP Ventures. And when I do this, you guys can't see it on the other two slides, right? Of the two screens. So KP Ventures has been, uh, is our venture capital um, firm. It, it's, um, it's under the Permanente Medical Group, which is the group that, um, it's the for-profit uh, physician group that uh, manages the 17,000 physicians at Kaiser. They've been in existence for about 15 years. Uh, currently, we have about 400 and something million um, in capital. I believe there's about 25 different um, uh, companies that we're investing in, uh, anywhere from IT to service to uh, physical therapy or therapeutic, as well as uh, pharma. Um, and then we've spun off about 20. Uh, so not quite as much as some of the other um, of our colleagues uh, earlier today. So definitely active there. Um, oh yeah, and the other one up here at the top is the Innovation Learning Network. So that's a, that is a global network that uh, KP helped start, uh, but it has Cleveland Clinic as part of that. It's got the NHS out of the UK. So it's about 30 different provider organizations um, and it's really meant to foster innovation in, from a healthcare perspective. And so if, uh, um, if you're a, a vendor and you have a solution, uh, that group actually will meet with you. They'll do a WebEx um, and you know, kind of look at your solution. So it's kind of a, just a way to, to spread um, innovation. Uh, and it's another group, um, the, and that's at ILN.org. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is, so we do events. Uh, we have retreats, we have tech forums, and then we do have about five different places uh, that we have uh, innovation that we ideate, that we build mock-ups, that we can test things. So um, the uh, Sydney Garfield Center up in Northern California is, probably, is our 50,000 square foot location, so that's probably the, the one that uh, many of you guys may have heard about. I've never been there, but I, you know, hopefully by the time I get to two years at Kaiser, I'll get up there. Um, so it's a really cool place. We have the Center for Total Health in Washington, D.C. Um, we just started uh, uh, in, in what we're calling our SCAL, our Southern California Innovation Studio down in Tustin at our medical office building there. Um, and then we've got, uh, uh, for the uh, reimagining the ambulatory experience, we uh, took one of our, uh, took a warehouse area in one of our uh, medical office buildings at Car in Carson in Southern California and kind of mocked it up. So all of the things we're thinking about changing in the outpatient experience uh, for the health hub type of a thing. We've got it all kind of in prototype there. So that's kind of cool. So we can we bring in physicians and administrators and folks and we can walk through things so they can actually see it uh, and to help ideate. And also down in San Diego, we're building a, ho a new hospital down there and we're, uh, uh, they've kind of set up their own uh, simulation lab where we're really looking at what is the patient room of the future. So we're looking at technologies. I wouldn't really call them innovative because they've been out for a little bit of a little bit of time, but not everybody's necessarily deployed them. But uh, interactive patient care, uh, so that you know the patient can have um, internet access, they can have educational uh, information, they can know who their care team is. So there's a, a lot we can do with technology. So we're we're kind of experimenting and saying, you know, how can we make a difference um, for the patient room? Okay, so so here's an example. Here's a, a quick photo uh, at the Garfield Center of a med surge ward that we have that we can do. Um, bring people through and have demos. And then this is also a simulation of, a, also at the Garfield Center of a home environment. So, all right, so like the others that shared earlier this morning, uh, you know, ours is Inspire, Ideate, and Impact. Um, so you guys can kind of read that afterwards. So pretty much it's, you know, uh, follows the same uh, <clears throat> pattern of identifying the problem, brainstorming, rapid prototyping, and then see if piloting and then see if you can operationalize it and uh, ideally uh, spread it. That would be, it's always great to spread. So um, 
lots of conversation. This is also at the Garfield Center, and so I think, uh, like many organizations, how do you really get the good ideas? You, you know, you get people together and you talk about it, and then you come up with, you know, some outcomes. So, so like many organizations, we really like to engage our folks. It's a human-centered uh, innovation design. Um, so, alrighty. So anyway, we've made it through the first 30 slides, something like that. All right, so what I've got, uh, we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, we'll probably go 10 minutes. I'll try to whiz through these as briskly as I can. Um, so what are some of the tools that we have actually looked at? These are all tools that we not only, not only have looked at, but which, what are the ones that we're actually using? Which ones do we find really helpful? So I hope that uh, some of the stuff I share um, maybe can be valuable to you. If anything, for, just for context, um, if you're thinking about any of these. Okay, so obviously the new normal is, I'm going to go bring all four of these up real quick, is virtual visits. Um, obviously it's not a perfect, uh, we're not in a perfect world with that yet. We're just starting. I would say this is the baby step. I shared a little bit about, um, uh, we're actually now, we have the ability to spin up a uh, video consult from within the healthcare, our healthcare record from hyperspace. Uh, for those that are using, know that for Epic. But, you know, look at some of the challenges here. So there's a lot of benefits, but still it requires, some of these require engagement uh, by the patient, and sometimes that's not easy to do. Um, and they're a little bit impersonal. So they're better than not having anything, but we're definitely not where we need to be. So definitely some, um, some opportunities here. And I think as we get into it, as we begin to start using it, uh, uh, kicking the tires with it, we're going to start finding ways to really improve this experience. Um, I mentioned that we're, we went to the retail space. Um, another thing that we found to be really helpful is to uh, uh, go out to the employer. So if you have a certain number of minimum of KP uh, members that a, an employer, I'm not sure what the number is, but <clears throat> we, you can financially afford one of these kiosks. So the one at the upper left there is a, called HealthSpot. Uh, so that's where you can uh, place that right into the employer's, uh, you know, in the lobby. So instead of having a, uh, an employee go home sick or what have you, they can actually go there. So for the most part, it's, um, you know, non-acute. But um, in there, you can actually, uh, so there's, uh, a, a nurse that will be stationed there. We have this actually up and running at uh, San Diego Unified, uh, uh, one of the, one of the uh, city and county departments down in San Diego. <clears throat> uh, but um, inside of there, you can close the door so you have privacy. There's uh, a bunch of drawers that come out and has an otoscope, stethoscope, uh, dermoscope, um, blood pressure cuff, et cetera. So lots of, uh, lots of things to take vitals and to really help the physician, uh, you know, diagnose, and we found this to be really a, a great patient satisfier, um, and so it seems to be working well. Now, you saw in the video um, the truck down there that's called KB Mobile, so we have those in Hawaii and the Northwest, um, and that's a look of, that's a view of what it looks like on the inside. Um, I don't know how much those will take off, the trucks, but, you know, it's good to have them. Okay, so obviously uh, there's a lot of uh, smartphone apps, um, tablet apps, so this is just a cross-section of the ones that we've been looking at. The one down there, number eight, uh, is the KP, uh, what we call our KP flagship app. So our strategy for the most part is to try to package as much into that one app as, po um, as possible to get the members to be, uh, you know, to be comfortable using it rather than having to download 25 apps. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that app in a moment, but you can email your doctor, make appointments, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also, there's a, uh, an abundance of uh, tracking uh, healthcare apps, so we've kind of looked at all these. Number six is what you saw also on the video, that's Everybody Walk. So that's kind of helping um, uh, members, you know, really get into their exercise regime. Okay, so here's, uh, here are six apps that uh, Kaiser has developed. Um, and uh, so you can see there's a, a kind of a variety there, but uh, uh, the one, the second one there is uh, where you can get um, alerts uh, for appointment reminders. So that's really helpful. Um, so if, if you're a patient or a member to get that, um, get that reminder. And so what I'd like to do is take a quick look here at, at uh, that flagship app. One of the things that we've recently just added to all of our 9.6 million members is a, what's called a digital membership card. So it's kind of being rolled up and rolled out in multiple phases. Currently, we have the ability to, um, um, so you can, you can see your membership information and, and identification of all your, uh, your beneficiaries, so that'll be on your mobile phone. Um, 
and then we're looking to add um, uh, payments and uh, the, the ability to check in from the mobile app. So I think that'll really improve the uh, consumer experience. And of course, the, the, all the way on the left there, we did have a slight problem. We had 134 different membership cards. Uh, the, uh, the cost, I think, was like $3 million, uh, to uh, just for one year alone to support that. So this is also a great way to reduce costs is to... Um, and we had 38% of our members who called in saying, hey, I need another membership card. So, so there's a lot of money um, involved in things like that. So it's just different ways to innovate. But we're thinking this will be very helpful for those that don't, uh, uh, they're not technology savvy, they don't have an iPhone or an Android or a Samsung, um, then uh, we're looking at other things. It's not part of this presentation, but, but potentially NFC uh, with wristbands. You know, at Disney, you can go and they'll give you a, a little wristband and you can kind of work your way through the park. So there's, there's other alternative ways to address everybody, uh, but we'll always still support the plastic card, okay? All right, um, there's a number of professional apps. This isn't quite cutting edge innovation per se, but for the, in the Epic world, you know, they just released Rover uh, for nursing documentation, Haiku uh, for an iPhone for physician um, access, and then Canto for tablets. So we're, you know, we're, we're working in that. There, number five is uh, um, we're working with that product for um, Telederm. Um, it's EKG number one. Uh, so you know, lots of things in there that we can um, assimilate. And really, the key is, can we get this data um, into the health record? Uh, is there a working API? So can so with this particular slide, obviously we've talked a lot about wearables. Uh, we are working with uh, Fit Jawbone and Fitbit. Uh, to, to get their information, uh, to work with, uh, with their uh, APIs. Um, so, uh, but what to do with all that data still is a big challenge. A um, couple interesting things here for alerting. Uh, number three is a called Teddy the Guardian. So you can give that to a child and it will monitor the vitals. So we've kind of looked at that and you can get uh, blood pressure, et cetera. So it's kind of a nice way to do that. Um, number six is interesting. Uh, it kind of helps with sudden uh, uh, infant death syndrome, where it can you can get all of the vitals for an infant by just from that onesie. And then number eight is a little interesting. That's um, that's called Mother. Uh, it's where you can put these little RFID tags on your keys, on your door, so you can know you know did I lose my keys? Did I is the door open? Etc. So it's a way to intelligently map that back to um, your mobile app <clears throat> to help you. All right, medication reminders. So we have been looking at medication reminders for a while, and we found, for the most part, that uh, that the uh, that the mobile app that we have for medication reminders, the thing that pops up, it's called My KP Alert or something. It's not in Southern California; it's in Northern California. Um, that's actually just as good um, as a lot of these, uh, you know, these form factor ones. So if you have, uh, maybe you're, uh, you don't, you're, you're a little bit debilitated, or you have a very high amount of medication to take, I think these. These types of devices would be great. Uh, there's the one where it can tell if you unscrew the bottle on the lower left. Um, so it kind of depends, but we found that the mobile app at this point works uh, pretty well. Uh, there's continuing advancements. We've been looking at sensors. Uh, so here's eight, there's nine. Uh, the one on the, the first one, number one, is Reebok makes a, uh, um, a cap that you can put on your head and it flashes green if you're good, but red if you got a concussion. So good for sports. Um, number nine, um, yeah, that's, I'm not sure it's called the radar shoe, but it has, uh, it can vibrate or make a noise based on a proximity sensor. Um, so for those that are visually impaired. And then of course, uh, to kind of support what Dr. Roos said earlier this morning about wearables are now getting more fashionable, so there's a ring number five. Uh, so we're, you know, it's kind of a new way to, to, to look at um, engaging with our, with our patients and members. Okay, these are kind of interesting. All right, so we are, um, our KP Ventures has invested in number three, the Proteus Raisin Microchip Pill um, to, to, and this is uh, to determine, you know, did you take the pill and et cetera. Um, the number two is, uh, um, I don't know if anybody would want to do that, but apparently it's like a dog collar. You wear it and then the light flashes if the pill was, has a little bit of metal in it. If it passes through, it'll detect that, so. I think this would be great for my kids, you know, thinking how to get them to stop talking. But, um, and then of course, number one, the, uh, an invasive central line to your bloodstream or, um, or a rectal thermometer is really the tr two true ways to get um, accurate temperature. But hey, isn't this a lot um, nicer just to be able to pop a pill here 
uh, for this number one. So, so just different ways we can take advantage of technology. Um, implant, we've been looking at implantable sensors. Um, so probably, uh, let me see, number three is interesting. It's got an insulin pump, uh, glucose monitor, monitoring, glucose sensors that are adhered to the, to the member's uh, skin. And then there's a tube that will automatically, based on the sensors from the glucose, uh, glucose sensors, that the pump will uh, go up a tube, which is sutured into the fat layer beneath the skin. So my only concern with that is that looks really cool, but you know what happens if it snags or something? It seems a little complicated. Um, and then number five is uh, kind of uh, uh, in, well interesting. Also, th that is a microchip uh, that uh, there's a company, uh, there's a uh, organization in Norway that has implanted those in all their employees, so you don't have they don't have to use a badge to badge in and out. Wow. Go Norway. Okay. All right. So then there's a cochlear implant that transmits uh, number four, and number two is a, a ocular implant. Um, I'm not sure where that fits on your eye there, but I don't know if it's a, like a contact lens or what. Okay. Mobile instruments. Okay. So we're seeing that the physician black bag uh, is, you know, returning, except it's going to have a lot of attachments for uh, a smartphone. Uh, so uh, so in addition to um, physicians going to see the, the patients and members, we're also, you know, their tools are changing. But, you know, uh, so uh, we've looked at a, a lot of these. I think we've used number seven, which is a, a digital stethoscope uh, for our Ebola kind of training uh, areas so that you didn't have to go into the, um, into the room where the, uh, where the person that might be infected. Uh, we're finding that the sound quality was, a little, not for this particular one here, but you know, we're getting some challenges on the sound quality. So, uh, but the otoscope, we used the, a version of that in the health spot down in San Diego. Um, yeah, and I, I looked up um, number four there, that's kind of cool, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a mobile app that's tied to the toothbrush where your kids can face off and compete against each other and win points uh, for brushing their teeth correctly. So they're not going to want to stop brushing their teeth, you know. So you get more points, and it's, that's kind of interesting. So it's interesting. On we talked about behavioral, uh, you know, how can we address people's behavior? So um, number three, we've looked at these. Uh, number three is a glove that you can talk, and so the receiver is on your pinky, and the earbud is on the is on the thumb. So if you, those you guys that are <laughs> really want to be into the the cool part, um, but you know, I think one of the one of the big initiatives that we've uh, we're looking at is how can we enable communication for our nurses and those that are, you know, uh, and physicians that are, you know, in the inpatient setting that, you know, we need real-time communication. We don't really have that. And we're, you know, some of us might be still using pagers. Uh, we've got iPhones that have promise, but hey, you know, you have to hold them. So, you know, potentially watches are, 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 are an option for that. So we're looking for is how do we enable, which we call clinical mobile communication, but how do we really enhance uh, staff communication? So I think in healthcare, uh, we're a little bit behind in this area, but there's a lot of opportunity to, to improve. We've got point products that are out there, so, you know, secure texting and, uh, you know, but we need to get the alerts from the, um, the telemetry monitoring to the nurse on, on that, whatever that device is. And then for those that use badges uh, for their nurses, that can be a little loud. And so we're really looking um, for um, to to keep, have a have quieter hospitals. And so the, it's good to be able to have that hands-free badge that the nurses can talk uh, uh, on. But sometimes it's a little bit too loud. Okay, um, so I'm kind of out of time here. Um, so I'll just just buzz through these really quickly. We have worked with number one. Um, so that's where surgeons can manipulate uh, the. Uh, instead of using a mouse or a keyboard, uh, they can go ahead and use their hands. Um, so it's um, so it's detecting their, that motion. <clears throat> um, definitely virtual. We talked a little bit about earlier this morning about virtual reality and avatars, but that's um, one of the things you saw in the video was the K it went really quickly, but it's called KP Baby. Uh, so we're working with an avatar for that, um, and then we've done a fair amount of exploration with glass, which is number five. Um, and for member services, also at Kaiser, if, uh, we have uh, kind of a virtual reality where we can let people see, you know, kind of what Kaiser is all about using that technology. So doing a lot with robots. Um, yeah, so six, seven, and eight are all the, are, are three things that we've got um, deployed. And number one is um, a virtual assistant. Um, and last slide here. Um, 
I can't stop without actually saying something about number four. So environmental monitoring is key. So number one is where you can get vital signs without actually have, through using ultrasound technology without having to actually you know touch the the child or the the pa uh, the patient. Um, number three is that you can have this in your vehicle, but if you're getting drowsy and you're falling asleep, it can detect and give you a jolt. Um, and then a. Uh, Number four, this is in Japan, but apparently they make, they make seats now with 300, uh, 300 sensors that, can, that have run from a scale, each sensor runs from a scale of zero to 256, and based on your, the print of your buttocks, is will, you'll be able to start your car or not. Isn't that fantastic? And I was thinking, what happens if they took away badges and they said they wanted this buttock sensor you know, to log into your computer? Can you? <laughs> so I don't think that's gonna happen here, but. Um, but anyway, so uh, yes, you have a unique, matter of fact, the statistics on that, I think it's 98% uh, um, accuracy. <laughs> I forgot, I was trying to remember before I came up here. Um, so if you're interested in it, just, you can just kind of go, uh, search for this on the internet, but it's in Japan. Um, this is a way to get vitals underneath a mattress, number five. Um, number six is where you can um, have an interactive uh, uh, screen on any surface, um, and then number seven is just kind of uh, how we're beginning to use uh, RFID to track uh, staff, to track objects, so we can really get a better picture of where is everything in the inpatient space. Okay, so lots of challenges. I know you guys have the answer out here, our innovators, yep. And so um, I'm gonna open it up. I, there's no time for questions, I guess, but this is an interesting slide, uh, maybe I'll. Um, I wanted to, yeah, if you guys can see that or not. So if we don't innovate, yeah, if we don't innovate, this came, somebody, a friend of mine sent me this. Uh, so this is queuing in an outpatient setting here, but this is not a Kaiser facility, by the way. But uh, basically everybody's sitting down on their, on their smartphones and they've just put their shoes in line. So you guys are supposed to laugh when I first came up with this. Obviously, I'm not using this one again. <laughs> anyway, so you know, people are very creative and they're very innovative, um, and so they're going to come up with some a solution, whether you, you know whether you do it or not. So I think the good thing for us on the on the supplier side is let's come up with a solution for them. So thank you very much for your guys' attention. You've been great. Uh, sorry I went a little bit over time. And does anybody? Uh, I guess uh, we're going to take a break till 2:30, right? So does anybody have any? Uh, not that I'm the president, so I can just make this decision, but <laughs> do we have like, a, does anybody have any questions about anything? Uh, otherwise, I'll be available afterwards, so yes. Uh, can we pass the mic over there really quick? Anything. Oh, yeah. There you go. All right. Oh, hi. Thanks so much for your presentations. Very innovative. I was just curious, um, in terms of storage of data and information, because you have populations across the country, um, how would you mirror that, that information so that you wouldn't have perhaps a, a, a you know, downtime, if you will? Are you talking about the electronic health record data or clinical? Um, all, all of the data that you would be pulling in from patient information, even electronic health records, I would assume it's mirrored across the country. Yeah, so that would be kind of basic block and tackling. So we, do we, we have many, many, many uh, clinical systems that have databases. Um, actually, we've recently uh, moved, uh, we're on year two of our big data initiative, so we've got a big data platform. So, uh, but uh, anytime we have patient information, it's all, it will always be redundant in highly available data centers. So I think that's what you're asking. <clears throat> um, and um, although um, we do have our electronic health record data actually in multiple separate instances, I think it's up to 20 or something like that, but they're all, uh, they're synchronized by region so that uh, it can be, a con and then they're basically synchronized uh, at another level all. So you as a patient, remember, you know, you would have the same experience. So um, 
your data is going to be available no matter what state you went to, you know, if, where if, let's say you went to a Kaiser facility. So, uh, but yeah, you would definitely want high availability, redundancy, and, um, and so we've leveraged internally, I didn't talk much about it, but uh, we've, um, uh, the internal cloud so that we can get better economies of scale and going to such modern things as virtual servers, you know. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so we're really moving, you know, we're, we're pretty strong in that at this point. Okay, thanks. Any other questions here? Okay, I see. Well, no, you're just waving, saying hi. Okay, so I think that's it then. Thank you guys.